Hey everybody, welcome to the Two Guys in a Cooler channel. My name is Eric and in today's episode, we're going to be diving a little bit deeper into the starter cultures used for making salami. Salami is a fermented style of sausage and there's a lot of different options when it comes to starter culture. So in today's video, we're going to focus on FLC. It's a bioprotective culture, incredibly popular. And through this video, I'm going to share with you how it works and what kind of salami you could produce with it. And then you can decide whether or not this is the right kind of culture for you. All salami will undergo some sort of fermentation process. And what makes this culture unique is that depending on the temperature in which you ferment will determine the type of product you end up making. For instance, if you ferment on the lower end, let's say 75 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit, you're going to end up with a traditional European style of salami like sopressata or genoa. But if you ferment on the higher end, let's say 95 to 100 degrees Fahrenheit, you're going to end up with a more North American style salami like summer sausage or pepperoni. This particular process is known as acidification and the general rule of thumb is the higher your temperature is when you ferment, the faster you're going to acidify your salami or the faster you're going to lower the pH of your salami. Notice that there's three types of bacteria in the salami. You have a lactobacillus, a staphylococcus, and a pediococcus strain. The lactobacillus strain and the pediococcus strain are primarily there to lower the pH. As they eat sugar, they produce lactic acid. The staphylococcus strain is primarily there for flavor and color development, as well as nitrate and nitrite reduction. In addition to all of that, back to firm FLC is a bioprotective culture, like we mentioned earlier, and that simply means that it's going to safeguard your salami against listeria. Now, moving forward, this culture is incredibly easy to use. For every 10 pounds of meat, you just mix half a teaspoon of this starter culture with a half a cup of water. And I'll demonstrate how to do that here in a minute. Bacteria require food in order to thrive, and the recommended type of food is a monosaccharide sugar like dextrose. All of the bacteria within this culture can easily consume dextrose, and depending on the pH that you're trying to target, you're going to add anywhere between 0.2% to 0.5% of dextrose. Another thing to consider is the type of cure that you're going to be using when you use FLC. If you plan on fermenting your salami on the higher end of the spectrum, 95 to 100 degrees, that generally means that you're making a semi-dried product that requires cooking. That's going to give you a signature tangy element like summer sausage and pepperoni. Generally, the turnaround time is less than four weeks, and therefore you're going to use Instacure number one. But if you plan on using this culture to ferment your salami at the lower end of the spectrum, 75 to 80 degrees, that generally means you're going to be making a fully dried, fully cured product that you can eat raw. Such products typically take longer than one month, Therefore, you would use Instacure number two. So just remember, regardless of what type of salami that you make, if it's going to be ready in less than four weeks, use Instacure number one. If it's going to take longer than four weeks, use Instacure number two. Okay, now that we've covered the basics, let's use the culture. That's a half a teaspoon of culture in a half a cup of water so that we can let it rehydrate. This particular process typically takes about 30 minutes, and you want to try to time it to where you're rehydrating your culture about 30 minutes before you're going to need it. So I'm going to just cover it with some cling film, set it to the side, and allow it to do what it's supposed to do. Now comes the million-dollar question. What do you do with your already opened starter culture pack? Well, the easiest way to preserve the life of your culture is to put it in a vacuum seal bag so that you can remove all the oxygen from it and place it back in your freezer. If you don't have a vacuum seal bag, put it in a Ziploc bag and make sure that it stays frozen. We're going to be making summer sausage, and pepperoni, and both of these salamis are going to be semi-dried and then smoked. So here's how we're going to prepare it. I'm just going to put my really chilled meat in my mixer, I'm going to add my seasonings, and then I'm going to slowly begin to incorporate my starter culture. And once I add my starter culture, then the process is going to begin. What you don't want to do is add your starter culture and then place it back in your refrigerator overnight. This can lead to unwanted problems later on down the road. Once your meat has been stuffed in a casing, it's time to ferment your salami. And all we're going to be doing is putting it in a box where you can control the humidity and the temperature. It can be an ice chest, a wooden box, it really doesn't matter. And all I'm doing is I'm controlling the temperature with an incandescent light, and I'm controlling the humidity with a humidifier, and we're going to hang our salami salami. Because I'm trying to achieve a low pH, I'm going to do fast acidification, which takes 24 to 36 hours. 
If you want a more mild salami, you're going to ferment at 80 degrees Fahrenheit for 36 to 72 hours. Sometime during the fermentation period, you're going to want to check the pH of your salami, however you choose to do that. What I like to do is separate a little bit of mince, wrap it in some cellophane, and that way I don't have to compromise my casing. So we're going to take that mince meat, we're going to go test the pH, and I'm going to show you a couple cool things to look for to let you know that your culture is doing what it's supposed to be doing. Right off the bat, your color is visibly going to be brighter. Most often it's going to be more vibrant. Your texture is also going to be more firm, and the smell of your salami is going to smell slightly fermented. Depending on what type of salami you're going to be making will determine at what pH you stop at. Anything under 5.3 is considered the safe zone, but if you want something with a little bit of tang to it, like summer sausage or pepperoni, you're going to go into the 4.8, even 4.7 range. Once you've reached your target pH, it's time to move your salami into the next stage. Now, for me, that was smoking and then drying. So right now, my salamis have been smoked, and now they're going to dry for about two weeks before they're ready to consume because I'm making semi-dried products. But if you're making fully dried products, hang your salami until they've reached a 35 to 40% weight loss and you're good to go. And that's how you use FLC starter culture for salami. You can get this starter culture from the sausage maker. I'm gonna put a link in the description box below. It'll take you to their website. They're gonna have a whole lot of information on it as well. But what I love about it is that they provide easy to read, easy to follow instructions on the back of every culture pack. If you have any questions about anything that you saw in this video or need further clarification, leave your comments in the comments section below. If you're new to our channel, we'd like to say welcome. Don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, and share, especially if you got something out of it. We post new videos each week. We'll see you in the next one.